In the latest episode of Hack My Growth, we're looking at how we can build a custom crawler in order to solve unique SEO marketing problems. Hey, thanks for checking out this video. If this is your first time watching or maybe you've been watching a while and you have not yet hit subscribe, please do so now. We create new content each week to help you get the most out of your digital marketing activities. So as I said in the opener, we're going to be talking about how we can create our own custom crawler using Google Colab as well as Adver Tools and a few other Python libraries. Now, before you get scared or wigged out, don't. Take a deep breath. It's going to be okay. I don't even proclaim to be a coder, but what I am pretty good at is copy and paste. And I know that you can use that control C button just as well as I can. So let's take a look at how we can create our own custom SEO crawler and how we can put it to work to help us solve some unique problems. All right, so let's look at how we can build a custom crawler using Google Colab as well as AverTools Python library. So what is an SEO crawler, sometimes called a spider? Well, crawlers are tools that can crawl website pages very much like a search engine would do. And it helps us gain valuable SEO information. It helps us kind of see the website the way that uh, Google or Bing or the other search engines would see our site. Now there are tools that do this. There's a number of tools out there that do this. The most popular probably being Screaming Frog, SEO Spider, and it's a tool that we love and we use all the time, but sometimes we need a custom solution. So why would you actually create your own. Most off the shelf crawlers, they do amazing things, but sometimes you have a specific question that needs to be answered and you can create a custom crawler in order to control all the outputs. So you only get the data that you want or need. This way you don't have to be constrained by maybe a tool setup, but you can just run a really quick uh, crawl of a website or pull only one piece of information or pull a whole lot of information and organize it in a different way using Colab and Python. So what is AdverTools? Uh, AdverTools is a Python library and allows you to do a lot of things. You can crawl websites, you can generate keywords for your search engine marketing campaigns, you can create text ads, you can analyze SERPs, you can gain insights on social media posts, you can do a whole lot more. Honestly, it's an extremely flexible library. It does a lot of cool things and it's fairly simple to use. I wouldn't call myself a programmer, I would just say I'm pretty decent at copy and pasting. Um, and so even though I'm not this in-depth Python programmer, I've been able to get a lot of benefit from using a tool like AdverTools. So this is what we're going to do in this video. We're going to create a new Colab file and we're going to install AdverTools. Then we're going to create a custom crawler using AdverTools. We're just going to do it the really simple way, the way they walk us through on their website to do it. We'll then crawl and analyze the website and the data. We're even going to visualize some of those results using another Python library called Plotly. And then we're going to export the data so we can use that data in other ways, maybe Excel sheets or reports or other things that we might need that data for. So let's go head over to our browser and take a look at this process. So Google Colab, it's a tool that's going to allow you to do a number of cool things. Um, it's going to allow you to run code within cells, to build tables, uh, to build kind of your own programs, to do custom things, anything from machine learning to SEO and more. If you've never used it before, it's free to use and it allows you to leverage Google's computational power free of charge. Uh, it's very, very cool. Uh, so I highly recommend you go check this out. If you're not already using Colab, there's a lot of great resources here. So one of the things you have to do in order to use a library that's outside of Python, uh, that's like the natural install, you need to install that program. Now, most of the time you use a function called pip. Uh, and you'll then pull in that new library. And it's a fairly simple process to use. One of the things that all of these guys do who build these programs is they actually show you exactly how to set it up within their docs. So always read these docs and it's gonna allow you to really understand how do I import these tools and get these tools working for myself. In order to install AdverTools, we're gonna use this line of code right here exclamation point pip install advertools. Once you've put the code here into the cell block in Colab, go ahead and hit the play button and it'll actually execute this block of code. You should see something like this where it's actually installing the code um, and installing this entire package here so that we can now use this library to build our crawler. Awesome, once you see the green check mark, you know that it's done. 
Next, we're going to want to execute a new line of code. So you can go ahead and hit the code button here again. It'll populate this new one. And we're going to import some specific parts of the Advert Tools library. So we're importing Advert Tools. We're importing the crawl method. We're also importing something called Pandas. And for those of you who uh, are not familiar with Python, Pandas allows us to work with our data inside of data frames, basically making tables within Python. So once you've set all of this up, you go ahead and run your code again. This is going to import all of this information. Now, if we're building a crawl, you'll notice over here, it's talking about how we can do this, how we can import these crawls. And there's a few approaches. You can import Aver tools like we did, right? Uh, and then you can run this command line, which will absolutely do what we're doing. I like to make Colab a little bit easier to use in case maybe somebody on my team wants to leverage, um, wants to leverage it as well. So uh, we're going to do something a little bit different than what they show here. But if you follow this approach, you will absolutely get it right and it'll work as well. So what we are going to do is this line of code. The first thing we're doing is defining a variable. And the variable is going to be the website that we want to crawl. Now by using this param type string, it actually gives me a box over here, which then allows me to type in over here what website I want to crawl. So I can put my website in here, I can put any website in here, and it'll actually set that variable for me. This way, I don't have to type it into here. I can just type it into a form, and maybe somebody who's not as comfortable with clicking inside of these cell box could just go ahead over here and type a site out. Now, in this case, we're going to use our simplified search site just because we'd use that all the time. So we'll go ahead and paste it over here. Now, right below that, we're following the exact same rules that they were setting over here. We're using advertools.crawl, and then we're using site as our variable. We have an output file, and then we want it to follow the links within the website. We do the next step as well, where we set the crawl data frame, and we tell it to open up our output file using, because it's going to output in JSON. So the pandas is going to read the JSON and create a data frame for us. And then at the end, I'm telling us just to show the head of this data frame to make sure that everything's working as intended. So once we follow this step and we run this cell, we're actually going to be crawling the website and it's going to do a, a data dump below and we'll be able to see all the different functions within this crawl. I'm going to go ahead and run this cell. It may take a few minutes just because it's running a, a crawl of the entire website. And then once we're done, we'll talk about how we can leverage the crawl data to pull out specific pieces of information. All right. So now the site has crawled and you can see I've got a list of URLs. I've got titles, meta descriptions. I've got my viewpoint. I've got my char set, my H1s, my H2s, my H3s. All of this information is being pulled into this frame. Now, if you want to see it a little bit cleaner, you can hit this magic button right here and Google is actually going to transfer this here into uh, a little bit easier of a data frame to work with. I actually have a total number of columns right here of 266. So that's a lot of columns that I can work with. So you might be asking yourself, what is in all of these columns? We can go back over here to, uh, to, to the advert tools and you can see all the different elements. There's quite a bit of, of export data that we can look at and pull lots of really cool information. So if we want to see a list of all the different columns that we have available, we can run something like this. So we need to take the columns first and create a list out of them. So we'll use the code list and then put a parentheses and inside there crawl underscore DF, which is the name of our data frame and call the new list columns or whatever. And over here we've got columns and we run that cell. And you can see all of these different possible columns. It's quite a bit of information, as you can see. It's, it's looking for a whole lot of information. So what if you want to see just a piece of that information? Like, what if you just wanted to get all the titles or all the meta descriptions or some of the H tag information? Or maybe you want to see all the pages and the type of schema.org markup that you might have on them. This is where having something like Advert Tools comes in really handy. So let's say we wanted to look at the JSON LD types across our pages. Well, we can start 
by starting with some new code. And let's go ahead and create a new data frame called JSON DF. Now we want to get some information from our original data frame. The first thing we're going to want to do, let me just go down here a little bit to make it easier on everybody. Crawl underscore DF. Now we're going to use bracket and another bracket. And the first thing we want to pull is the URL. We know that URL is important because we need to know all the pages within our site, all the URLs. The next thing we want to do is we want to find the JSON type. So we can go back to this list and we can go JSON type. Copy that and say, I also want to know the JSON type. I'm going to go ahead and keep this consistent. That way, we follow best practices. So what do we do in this little line here? We said create a new data frame and use the data from our original database, from our original data frame, and pull back only the URLs and the JSON-LD types. Now, if I run this, it's going to create a new data frame with just that information. In order to see this data, I can just go ahead and put JSON underscore df and do a new cell and hit enter. Now I've got a list of all of my pages and the type of markup that's associated to those specific pages. So this can obviously be very helpful if you wanna look really quick and find all the JSON on your website and what types that you have and what markup you have. And maybe do you have some pages that are missing markup and you can quickly identify those. So we have this new data where we got all of our URLs and we've got all of our JSON-LD types that we know exist on that page. And so let's say we wanna create a quick report or maybe a quick graph just to show either our client or somebody else, uh, maybe the amount of information, the amount of data that we've actually added to this site for them and the different types of it. So the first thing I need to do is count all the different types of markup that's been added and then I can visualize it. So let's start by counting this and creating a new data frame. Now I've already created this code and I'm gonna walk you through it. It's called JSON counts, this is a new data frame. And we are taking the data from the JSON LD column right here and we're having it count the unique values that are in this column. So when I run this code and then I tell it to output it, you're going to see that we have all of that information counted. So what it's actually doing, uh, it's, it's giving me this error because it's actually finding some from zeros or some NAs in the list. That's okay, because uh, you'll see in just a second that we actually got that information here. Here's all the different markup types and it's all been laid out for us. So you're also noticing though that it doesn't quite look like a data frame like it is here. We actually have to re-index this data frame or this variable into a data frame for it to work properly. So we'll go ahead and give our data frame, we'll have an equal sign, and then we're gonna do our data frame again, and then we're going to use reset index, and open and close parentheses, and run this code. Now, when we run this, you'll see we actually have a data frame. So we've got the index, which is the term, and then we've got the JSON-LD type, uh, the count of that. So we still don't have a graph. We still just have another data frame. What do we need to do in order to turn this data frame into a visualization or a graph? We're gonna use something called Plotly. Plotly is another library very similar to AverTools that we can use to create visualizations. And specifically, we're gonna use Plotly Express. So the first thing we need to do is install Plotly. We go ahead and do pip install plotly. I'm gonna run this cell. It's already been installed in this worksheet, but it's okay. As you can see, it'll tell us that it's already installed, already satisfied. We're good to go. Take that code we just copied from here and paste it back into our crawler. We don't need this middle one because this is data um, that we're not using. We're using our own data. We do need to import plotly express as PX. And now we need to connect our new database here uh, in order to get the right information into our chart. So 
our data frame was called JSON counts. On our X, we're actually going to use index. And on the Y, we're going to use JSON type. So why did I choose those? Well, index is where the words are. Uh, so we want to have those on, on, the X, on the X. And then the count is on JSON LD at type. And that's going to be our Y. So that's going to tell us how many are in each of those columns. So we'll go ahead and put that here. Pretty simple. And then fig.show will actually show that graph. So now we've got all of our different types down here. And then over here, we've got the different amounts of each type in a nice graph. So if you wanted to share this, you can actually just use this download as a PNG and Plotly will now download it to your computer. You can take this and you can say, we've you know put this much markup on these many pages. Uh, so pretty cool way to quickly visualize it. But what if we wanna download all of this data and work with it maybe in you know Google Sheets or something else? Well, you can also do that. In order to do that, we just need to use one more line of code and we should be good to go. So let's say we want to download this table here with all of our website pages and the JSONLD type. We can go ahead to this cell or any one that you really want to, and then we're going to create a new line of code. We need to use something from Google Colab called import files. That's the first thing that we're going to do. Next, we're going to find this data frame, which is JSONDF, and we're going to add this below. And we're going to say dot two underscore CSV. And then we're going to give it a name. So maybe we call this JSON underscore DF dot CSV. So once you type this code in, you've actually created your CSV file. And if I look over here into my folder, you're actually going to see the file right here. So from here, I actually could just go ahead and download it. Or I could put a line of code here that helps us download it even quicker. I could say files.download. And then I go ahead and call this file, which I just created, and I asked for Colab just to download it for me directly. So when I run this cell, it is now gonna download that file, and here I have it. I can go ahead and click open, and now I've got this CSV file that I could do whatever I want with any kind of spreadsheet tool that I have. I can also see the ones that are possibly missing some markup. So there you have it. We've gone ahead and we've created our own custom crawler. We've pulled some custom data. We've visualized that data and we've downloaded that data for use in other programs. Now we did all this and I am not a computer programmer. I don't even try to pretend to be one. Like I said before, I'm just good at copy and pasting. You guys can figure these things out too. So when you have questions, there's always cool solutions. If you're willing to try something new and different, I highly recommend you play around in Colab, there's lots of great resources out there. There's lots of people who are way smarter than me, doing much more amazing things that I've learned a ton from and has really helped me in my marketing game, also in my research, in crawling, and so much more. If you have any questions about what we did today, uh, please comment below. I'm also going to give access to this specific Colab file, and I'll even share step-by-step -step the code that we used along the way. Thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. And until next time, happy marketing.